Did you know that synchronous reluctance motors, which were invented in the late 1900s, are now considered superior to induction motors? These motors have advanced electronic controls, which makes their efficiency and torque output far superior to any other motors. Many industries, and even the company named after the inventor of the induction motor, Tesla, have started switching to SYNRM motors. Tesla uses an advanced version of the SYNRM motor. Let's discuss the physics and design features of this new giant in the electrical world. The physics of this motor are quite simple. You might have observed this interesting phenomenon. When a magnet comes within range of iron nails, the nails are attracted to it. To comprehend the reason behind this response, we have to understand two things. First, the magnetic field chooses the path with the least resistance. And second, the structure of iron. Let's explore the resistance the magnetic field has to face. More specifically, this resistance is called reluctance. Magnetic flux always has a tendency to flow through the path of least reluctance. Maximum magnetic flux passes through the iron instead of the air because iron's reluctance value is much lower than the reluctance value of air. Now, let's learn about the structure of iron. Iron has a domain-based structure. Domains are small areas with individual magnetic poles. However, as you can see, these poles are naturally arranged in a random direction, so if you sum up the total magnetic field, it cancels out. A typical domain area is the result of atoms with unpaired electrons spinning in the same direction as shown in this visual. As the permanent magnet's magnetic flux flows through the iron nail, its domains are aligned in a single direction. Once that alignment occurs, the entire iron nail will have a resultant magnetic field, and it acts like another permanent magnet. Thus, an attractive force is generated between the nail and the permanent magnet. However, for the domain to be aligned, the existence of an external magnetic field is mandatory, so it's more accurate to call the iron nail a temporary magnet. Let's do an experiment and generate a torque using the reluctance force concept we have just learned. A solid iron bar, which is free to rotate, is positioned as shown. Now, let's keep an electromagnetic at an offset to the iron bar. The iron bar will definitely be attracted to the electromagnet due to the reluctance force, and it will rotate. However, after being aligned with the magnetic field, the torque on the iron bar becomes zero. This is a crucial concept to note. When the iron bar and the magnetic field are perfectly aligned, the torque on the rotor will be zero. Now, let's design a simple SYN-RM using the fundamentals we've developed so far. Here, a three-phase coil arrangement replaces the electromagnet. When a three-phase alternating current passes through this coil, it will produce a magnetic field which is rotating. Can you tell what will happen to the iron bar under the influence of this rotating magnetic field? A straightforward answer is that the rotor will align with the magnetic field, as we learned in the previous experiment, and it will rotate at the same speed as the magnetic field. This answer seems quite logical. However, when you apply a rotating magnetic field to a still rotor, the results might surprise you. The rotor actually resists rotation. Let's learn why. As the end pole approaches above the rotor, the iron bar's domains start to align as shown, and the opposite poles will have attractive force between them. Next, the rotor should rotate. The rotor does rotate. But the villain here is the rotor's inertia, which causes it to achieve a very low speed compared to the RMF. By this time, the succeeding S-pole will come upon the rotor, which causes a repulsive action. Well, you might think that because there are no permanent magnets, the induced poles on the rotor can change as the RMF changes. However, they don't. Here's the catch. The magnetic domains that we learned earlier actually take time to spin. This is a well-known phenomenon called hysteresis. Thus, as the south pole approaches, the rotor poles are unable to change quickly, resulting in a repulsive force. On account of rotor inertia and hysteresis, a still rotor is subjected to alternating attractive and repulsive forces. This is why the SYN-RMs are inherently not self-starting. 
Therefore, the highly adopted way to make this motor self-start is to reduce the speed of RMF during start and then gradually speed it up. Let's test this method. We can easily control the RMF speed by varying the frequency of input current. Initially, the RMF speed is almost zero. An opposite polarity magnetic pole is induced in the rotor and it becomes attracted to the RMF and slowly starts accelerating. The controller device detects the position of the rotor. Depending upon this position, the controller adjusts the RMF speed so that there will always be an attractive force between the rotor and the RMF. As the rotor speeds up, the controller increases the RMF speed as well. Thus, the rotor runs in synchronism. Apart from starting the motor, the controller plays a crucial role in the SYNRM's normal operation as well. As we've seen, if the iron bar is aligned with a magnetic field, the torque produced will be zero. A hypothetical working with zero load on the rotor is shown here. Adding a load on the motor results in the rotor rotating behind the field at an angle. This angle is known as load angle. Now, suppose the load on the motor were to increase abruptly. Obviously, the load angle will also increase. However, if the load angle crosses a critical limit, the rotor will slip out of synchronism and come to a halt. The controller comes to the rescue in such situations. It continuously measures the rotor's position, efficiently adjusts the angle and magnitude of alternating current, and makes sure that the load angle is always below the critical limit. Clearly, SYNRMs are software powered. Just by adding one more iron bar perpendicularly, we can produce double the amount of torque. Please note such a rotor has to use a four-pole rotating magnetic field. Now, let's discuss another crucial concept related to SYNRM. You can observe that the interaction between the magnetic field and the rotor area is high at this angle and low at this angle. The difference of flux interactions results in reluctance torque production, which means that in order to increase the reluctance torque further, a maximum flux interaction in the left-hand side alignment and a very low flux interaction on the right-hand side alignment is necessary. A perfectly round rotor design will result in maximum magnetic flux interaction. However, such a design does not have a minimum flux interaction position. The flux is constant in all the angles. To understand how to produce a minimum flux interaction design, let's use FEA simulation. The FEA software EM Works 2D by SolidWorks accurately simulates the shape of the rotating magnetic field. Now, let's arrange alternate layers of a ferromagnetic material and a non-magnetic material along the magnetic field lines. This design will obviously produce a high flux interaction at this angle. The interesting thing is that when the rotor is offset 45 degrees, the flux interaction becomes extremely low. Due to the non-magnetic barriers, the rotor experiences higher reluctance at this position. This is a perfect design from an electrical engineering perspective. However, when engineers tested this design, they observed that the rotor fails mechanically at higher speeds, since the bond between different layers fails to provide necessary centripetal force. Moreover, manufacturing of such radially stacked rotors is quite rigorous. For this reason, the modern SYNRMs use a slightly different design, a rotor design based on thin laminations. Manufacturing of this design is quite easy, and at the same time, it maintains the same good electrical qualities. Here, curved cavities are punched on the thin laminations. Also, the natural air between these cavities acts like a magnetic insulating material. SYNRMs have started replacing induction motors in most of the industries due to its remarkable performance. In the induction motors, Torque is produced due to the interaction between the RMF and current flowing through the rotor bars. This current flow results in considerable amounts of I-squared R losses, losses in the form of heat. This is why the induction motors have a lesser efficiency compared to the SYNRMs.
Due to the absence of I squared R loss in SynRMs, they run cooler. For the same current input, SynRMs are able to produce 10 to 15% greater torque than induction motors. Finally, the most obvious advantage. SynRMs always run at synchronous speed, the speed of RMF. In an induction motor, the rotor speed will be slightly less than the synchronous speed, and this speed varies according to the load. We hope you now have a good understanding of how synchronous reluctance motors work. Next time, when you attach a magnet to your refrigerator, you'll know it attracts due to the same reluctance force. We thank EM Works for their FEA support in this video. Please don't forget to press the support button. Thank you.